Hey guys, welcome to another Unity tutorial. So this one's actually targeted at Huey, or Hugh, however you say the name. Um, basically just showing you how to uh, fire an event while you're holding a button. Uh, so it's actually quite simple, but the, there isn't much documentation out there on how to do it. So I'm just going to create this video. It's going to be a nice quick one. Um, so I've already imported my inputs and I've already got my player script and I've assigned it to a cube in my scene. Um, so it's basically what I did at the beginning of the initial input video. Um, so what I'm going to do inside our action map, I'll add another action and we'll call this sprint. So my understanding is what you want to be able to do is uh, say our character, we hold W to move forward. And if I hold shift, we want his movement speed to increase. And then when I let go of shift, obviously, uh, we wanted to stop sprinting. Uh, so there's obviously a few ways you can do it. Um, this is just one of the ways, which I think, judging by the way you replied to my comment, this is how you want to do it. Uh, so we can create a binding for, um, we'll just call this sprint start. Um, and under this binding, if we click this little drop down and click listen, we can click the button you want uh, for the sprint. So if I click shift, it'll be shift keyboard. Um, and interactions, we can change that to press. Um, I think by default, if you don't add this, it defaults to press only, but just to be safe, I'm gonna pop it in. Um, and I'm gonna create a new action and we'll call this sprint finish. Um, and we'll just do the same thing. It's under the binding, do listen, click shift. Um, except this time for interactions, we will do press and then change this drop down trigger behavior to release only and click save asset. So I'm gonna be making use of these two events that get fired. Um, so if I can now close this down, make sure that on your input, you have the little checkbox, generate C sharp class ticked. Um, and then you should get a little class that looks very generated <laughs> uh, that we can make use of. So I'm gonna go back to our player script. Um, as you can see, I've already got some stuff in here. So what I've already got is a reference to my default control. Um, so that's basically just the name of this new class that's auto-generated and I've just given it a name of default control. Under my awake, I have then also just uh, set it to a new instance of itself. And then a little further down here, I've made use of the built-in Unity on enable and on disable to enable and disable our controls. All right, so once you've got that set up, uh, we're going to make use of um, our new events that we've just created. So I'm going to create a public bool for um, is sprinting. Um, and so effectively what you want is that bool to be true when I'm holding the button down uh, and false when I release it. So nice and simple. Uh, what we'll do under, under our update, we'll create two functions. So we'll create a private void for sprint pressed and a private void for sprint released. All right, and these two functions will be basically just set in the value for our is sprinting. So when we press it, we set as sprinting to true. And when we release it, we set as sprinting to false. All right, and then basically uh, we need to basically call these new functions dependent on when the input is pressed. So with our default control here, what we'll do is we'll go into our player and we'll just use our functions, the maps that we created. Uh, so we have our sprint keys. So you see we have our start and finish. Um, and these basically have an event on them um, that gets triggered as soon as uh, their conditions are met. In our case, we told it when the button is pressed. Um, so we're going to make use of these uh, built-in events. And so what we need to do is we also need to get the event data out of it. So to do that, we could just give it an alias. So we're going to alias of X. Um, and what we'll do is we'll just say, um, we'll just call our sprint pressed. So if we want to make use of the event data, uh, we're able to, but for now, we're just going to call the, the function straight up. 
Uh, so I'm going to create another, I'm basically going to duplicate that and we're going to do it for sprint finish as well. And call our sprint released. Okay, so the way this works, default controller, player, sprint start. I'll go over to Unity. Uh, you see default control, and if you go into you have player, and then actions. So it's the name of the con name of the control, the action map, and then the action. All right. So now what we need to do is now that we've done all this, let me just move that in here, um, and we'll just move our update separate. So we can basically just close this region, hide all that stuff. Now that that's all done. Okay, so basically we have our awake, we assign our functions to the inputs, uh, which get called here, and basically what these inputs are basically just um, set how it is sprinting. So now we have this variable that's being set, uh, we can go into Unity and just double check this. So we'll just make sure that our cube has the script attached, um, and I'm going to hit play. All right, so you can see as soon as I hold down shift, it says is sprinting is set to true by this little tick box over here. And as soon as I let go, it goes back to false. All right, so let's create a, let's just make our player move. So we're actually gonna go ahead and take it a step further in the tutorial and we'll actually apply it to our player. So we'll create a public float for movement speed and a public float for sprint speed. Okay, and then in the update, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna set transform dot position plus equals transform dot forward and then times that by our movement speed. All right, so if I go back into Unity, as soon as I hit play, our character is going to start moving. Um, the movement speed is set to zero, so technically he shouldn't start moving. But you see, if I start upping the movement speed, you can see he moves a little. All right, so I'm also going to add another times by time dot delta time. All right, so if we go ahead and have a look now, I hit play. All right, and what we'll also do is um, we can use our variable up here, uh, is sprinting. So if I use if is sprinting um, and add an else, so this line of code down here is basically if um, we're not sprinting, so we can pop that in the else. Um, and sprinting is going to be exactly the same, except we want to use our sprint speed instead of movement speed. So if I go back into Unity now, we set movement speed to 1 and sprint speed to 4 and hit play. So as soon as it plays, we should start moving. And if I hold shift, you see he moves a lot quicker. If I let go, you see he stops sprinting. All right, so hope that helps. Um, if it doesn't, just post in the comments and I'll uh, try my best to help again. Um, but yeah, no, thank you for watching. And if you haven't seen my Fallout series, uh, there'll be a link in the description. Go ahead, check it out. Currently trying to rewrite the whole Fallout by myself, which is, uh, obviously quite hard <laughs> but um have a lot of fun doing it so yeah go ahead check that out if you can uh if not i'll see you in my next video